The Monotype Composition Caster is used for casting type for letterpress printing. The caster uses a molten alloy kept liquid in this heated pot. For reliable casting, this pot has to be kept at a fairly consistent temperature to avoid the metal separating by partial crystallization or becoming too hot and oxidizing too much and taking too long to harden when it's cast. Casters with electric heaters are usually fitted with mechanical temperature controllers like this one. However, this one on my caster has become unreliable, so I've had to replace it. I've built this electronic-based controller to replace the old mechanical temperature controller, and this video documents how that was built. Here are some of the parts I'm going to be working with. I was originally planning on using this thermocouple, which is a Type J thermocouple, which I just have kicking around. Believe it or not, I found it at Value Village. But this has an Inconel sheath, which is uh, a nickel alloy. And my understanding is that nickel alloys will gradually dissolve in molten lead alloys. So it's probably not a good idea to use this one. The other problem is I don't have a cable for it. And buying cable by the foot, or sorry, buying lengths of cable, you have to buy 100 feet spools, which are several hundred dollars. I didn't want to do that. Uh, so the best way to get a short length of thermocouple wire was to buy an inexpensive thermocouple off of, in this case, off of Amazon. So I have this one. It actually had a little casing at the end, but I uncrimped the casing and there you can see the thermocouple junction and then the two wires and then it's got a braided stainless steel sheath on it, which is nice. But of course I can't put this right in the metal, so I'm going to have to make my own sheath for it. And I want just some plain steel tubing, some flexible steel tubing, and it seems the best thing to go with was brake line for automobiles. So I have here a length, it's a 40 inch length of quarter inch galvanized steel brake line. Uh, obviously we don't want the galvanizing in the pot either, but the galvanizing can be taken off easily with some acid. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the end off of this with a saw and just check that it actually is steel and not some strange alloy that I don't want. Here's the end of the brake line. This is the factory flared end. And at the store I actually thought that brown color was copper, a copper lining of some sort, but it turns out it's not. It's just the inside of the line is plain steel and it's rusted a bit in storage. It's just a thin film of rust. The outside is galvanized and other than that it's basically solid steel throughout. So this will be good for making a sheath. What I'm going to be doing is weld it to seal it completely. And that will be the end that goes down in the metal. Actually the back end I'm probably going to keep the, the other flared end of the tube because that makes a nice smooth end that will uh, protect the wire from any damage. This is the temperature controller I'm going to be using because I have four of these surplus kicking around. This is a Syscon RK Sear series. It's a REX C900 and a bunch of other alphabet soup after that. This is a one that's called a one quarter DIN size. It's a standard size, standard mount. It's essentially about four inches square and a little more than five inches deep, which is actually causing me a bit of a hassle. Finding a cabinet that's deep enough for that is a bit of a problem. But the nice thing is, once it's installed, there's a little tab underneath there that you can press and you can pull the entire guts out of this thing for servicing. You don't have to take apart the back of the cabinet. Uh, that's useful because being surplus I found that the, the output relay on this was a bit flaky so I'll be able to just replace the output relay. The relay itself even sits in a socket so no soldering required to change that relay and they're really cheap relays. It's a C900FJA3-M star NN. If you decode that, it, uh, it tells you sort of the characteristics of the output. Even though this one is surplus, these items are still available new, and I don't think they're particularly expensive. It seems that brake tubing is nominally sized based on the inside diameter. So this is quarter inch brake tubing, and the inside diameter is almost a quarter inch. So I actually could use a smaller tube that would be easier to bend, easier to handle. I really only need about an eighth inch inside diameter. I got another size. See, this one is listed as a European brake line. The 3 16 size is actually the outside diameter. I'm assuming that uh, North American sizing is based on inside diameter and European sizing is based on outside diameter. 
This brake line is a nice fit for the thermocouple. I can just push it in. Here's what the enclosure is going to look like. This is the front panel. I'll have the temperature controller here, an on-off switch here to control whether the heaters are on, and I have a stroke counter for the pump, which I'll put on here. Right now it's sort of mounted next to the old temperature controller. Um, I'll have a fuse holder on the bottom, as well as a mounting post of some sort to go on the post that holds the current temperature controller. And there'll be a hole or two with grommet or grommets for the lead going to the thermocouple and the lead going to the uh, pump stroke sensor. Now I'm going to go with the non-welding way of making a case. It basically be two C-shaped pieces of sheet metal. I'll be using um, 16 gauge steel. This will be the front panel, top and bottom, curved around this way with flanges at the sides. And then the back will be just a simple C-shaped piece folded around the other way. Uh, the reason to do it this way is that basically I'll be able to take the back off and everything that's attached will be attached to the front. There'll be all the instruments here and the mounting plate on the bottom and there'll be plenty of access at the back to install parts. Now I've got my enclosure finished here and the first thing I did after finishing it was drill another hole in it. I decided I wanted a screw for connecting ground wires to on the inside. So I drilled a hole here, I actually tapped it, and put another screw in here. That covers a very snug fit. Anyway, this screw for the ground is actually threaded into the case, but I want to add another nut to it and some thread locker to make sure it doesn't just come loose accidentally when you're trying to move the wires around. So this is the non-permanent thread locker. Okay, and now I have a proper grounding post. So the first thing is a little rubber grommet that the wires from the thermocouple and the stroke, uh, pump stroke sensor are going to come through. That's just a matter of pushing it into the hole. There we go. Just make sure it's fully expanded in there. The next fitting to add is this half inch EMT fitting. Well, it's nominal half inch anyway. This will be how it mounts. Bring that in here. And it gets the standard electrical nut put on here. And I'm hoping I can get this tight enough that you won't be able to loosen it just by grabbing this case and turning it. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, for some reason these, are, these nuts have traditionally just been something you tighten up with a punch rather than actually you know using a wrench or something sensible. So that's how I'm going to tighten it. Hopefully it'll be tight enough that you're not going to be able to just grab the case and turn it and undo it. Next fitting is the fuse holder. That goes in there and it's a nice close fit in that hole. This nut has a flange built onto it so it sort of, sort of goes one way better than the other. And it's also really easy to cross thread. There we go. This one uses a 14 millimeter wrench. There we go. And now the next thing is to mount the stuff on the front panel. The first part I'm putting on is the power switch. It has got a little groove in its threads here and then this locator ring has a tab to fit in the groove and then a tab that goes through the extra hole in the panel. You can see the small hole right here. So that all goes together and that will stop the switch from twisting. I've got the bezel, goes on the front. It is also keyed and then the nut. This is a nice little knurled nut, but it means I'm going to have to use pliers to do the final tightening. Oh, there I got it. Now using the pliers I'm going to have to get this snug, but not get anything scratched up. And 
I see I've already scratched something. Uh, the good news is it turns out this does have a plastic film on it to protect it during assembly. So this scrape here is just in that film. So once I peel the film off, which I'll do once everything's done, it should be nice. And the next thing to add is the pump stroke counter. It's held on just by a bracket that screws to the back like this with a couple of screws here. This is just the case for the temperature controller. The guts slide in from the front after. It's held on by these special little brackets here that slide into a groove down here. And this tab clips into little slots here. And then as I tighten this screw, it pushes this rod down and it pinches the front panel between this bezel and this foot. So one of these is going to be easy to put on because it's in plain sight and the other one's going to be tricky to put on because it has to be done by feel. So this has to go on this way up. I'm putting it over the edge of the table here right now so the toggle on the switch sticks down and that way just the weight of things keeps this in position while I try and fit the first bracket on. So I have to slide it in so the bottom goes in the groove there and then these tabs go in there. As I tighten the screw it pushes this long bar down until it's tight against the front panel. same thing happens back here except that I have to do it sort of by feel and that's everything for the interior assembly this is the actual guts of the temperature controller this is the output relay, and I just replaced it. You can still buy the same relay, and it plugs into a socket. Um, the relay that was there seemed to be acting a bit flaky. And this slides in here, and the connectors join up at the back. And that's it. So that's all ready to take up and mount on the mounting post on the, on the monotype. And everything else here I'm going to be doing once it's installed. I'll do all the interior wiring once it's installed. The time has come to prepare this piece of brake line to uh, act as a sheath for the thermocouple. This twisted piece of wire is actually more or less the shape I want for the finished piece. Uh, it would be like this on the caster. The part my hand is holding is where it goes over the lip of the pot. So what I'm going to do is just sort of pass Pull this tube along the wire and sort of run it along and rotate it to figure out where I want to cut the tube. I'll use the tubing cutter here to cut this pipe. Uh, that normally leaves a burr inside the pipe. That's usually considered a problem, but in this case, because I'm actually going to be welding the cut in shut, all the burr is is a starting point for welding things shut. There it goes. Now this is the end, it's going to be welded shut, and that's what's going to be in the pot. So I'm going to uh, use some sandpaper to clean the galvanizing off the last few inches here so I don't have to worry about zinc vapors when I weld it shut. Other than that, I'm going to not, I don't think I'm going to worry about the, the, um, the zinc on the rest of the tube because there's so little zinc there, it's hardly going to contaminate the type metal to any extent that really matters. I've got the brake line cut and cleaned and in the vise end up, so now I'm going to weld this end shut using my oxyacetylene torch. I do have a bit of filler rod handy in case it's necessary just to coax the, the molten bead to close up at the front.
probably grind that a bit to make it look a little prettier. I've got the box installed on the post here and the clamp underneath, which you can't really see is all tightened up. So this box is nice and secure and it's time to start wiring things. I've already got the wires here running up from the uh, contactor box. So the next thing to do is to put in the, well the first thing to do because they're such fine wires, is to put in the wires for the uh, cycle counter. So this wire feeds up through the grommet. And I'm just going to secure it with a, a knot on the wire rather than using a strain relief. I do have holes there for a strain relief, but I'm going to reserve them for the uh, cable for the thermocouple. I'm going to do a figure eight knot. I think that's a little more stable than just an overhand knot. And I need enough wire past the knot to be able to actually make my connections. So I need... Oh, this wire is stiffer than I expected. It's kind of fighting me here. Okay, now let's see if I have enough slack here to reach the connections inside. Yeah, and that's a nice tight knot. So this wire is quite fine. It's number 28 or finer. I just have to connect to these two terminals using these two tiny screws and this one black wire that just absolutely insists on getting in my face. Stay. That was a bit of a nuisance to do. In retrospect, what I should have done is undo these two screws that hold the meter to the panel and pull the pull the panel pull the meter out of the front hole in the panel, hook it up, and then push it back through the hole. In any case, I'm ready to do the rest of the hookup now. So, first wire to hook up here is the ground. That's a ground wire coming from the contactor box. I've got another ground wire here to connect as well, which will go to the ground terminal on the actual temperature controller. And the next terminal to hook up is the neutral wire which will go up here to the neutral terminal and of course I should have hooked up my ground terminal which is just barely long enough so I'm going to bring it in from this side Bend, bend the lug up here a bit to make it fit better. Uh, the hot leg coming up from the contactor box goes to one side of the fuse here. Okay. And then from the fuse holder, I got my wires all made up for hooking things up here. From the fuse holder, The power then goes to the hot terminal. On the temperature controller. And then it also continues from there. So I'll put in another terminal, another spade lug here. I get them on top of each other rather than crisscrossed under the under the screw. From here it goes down to the switch.
And then from the power switch, I have another wire that will run switched power. The fuse here makes it difficult to actually get these connectors on. There we go. So that power runs from there to the common terminal of the relay, the output relay of the uh, controller. And this little device here is a snubber network to protect the controller from any inductive effects because it's driving a coil and if you don't do this you can get um, arcing on the relay terminals which will make them wear up prematurely I don't quite have the screw loose enough to hold both terminals there we go And this says that's the normally closed terminal, and that's the normally open terminal. And I'm going to assume, oh, well now, does normally open mean like open when things are warm enough or open when they're not warm enough? Well, we'll find out, won't we? One of the part numbers for this uh, controller actually sort of implies that it's sort of reverse logic. So it might be that it comes on terminals that are normally closed open when it's hot enough or some, something like that anyway and my last terminal here is the wire that goes back down to the contactor coil so essentially the the controller contains a relay which controls the contactor which is another relay And that's all the wiring. So ground goes to the case, then goes to the ground terminal. Power goes to the fuse, and then to the controller, and then to the switch, and then to the relay contacts. And then from the relay contacts, we have the switched power going back down to the contactor. And we have a neutral running the power supply. Okay, that should be everything. So I've plugged it in and right now I think the controller is upset that it has no thermistor connected. 24 is a set point because I was fooling around with the thing at room temperature earlier. This is set to Celsius by the way. After that first little test I'm going to got the power unplugged again. Now I'm going to run the thermocouple wire. I have the thermocouple hooked up but to get it through the grommet I had to pull out the, uh, the cycle counter wire. But I think I can fit that back through the grommet now it's just that these terminals on the end of the wire were kind of big to fit through the grommet. The other thing I'm going to have to do is um, perhaps put insulation on some of these connectors because it's far too easy right now for this metal shielded cable to move around and hit one of the live terminals. However, I did test the thing just now and it does come on. And I set it for a set point at just slightly above room temperature and put my hand on the thermocouple and once the thermocouple warmed up it shut off again. So that seems to be essentially working properly now. That'll be a little safer to reach around in here now. I just have three more terminals to do. I've got some of those push terminals insulated a bit better now, so it's not quite so big a chance of some wire contacting them. So now I'm going to try doing the setup. First of all, setting it to Fahrenheit. In the kitchen and in printing shop, Fahrenheit rules in North America, even though I'm used to Celsius for everything else. Now I have to set up the parameters on this controller again. I've actually set it to Fahrenheit already, but I'm going to go through the settings again to show you how they go. There's two sets of settings. 
One of them is things like the tuning for the, uh, the heater, so it knows how to anticipate how much the pot will continue heating up after it turns off the heat and stuff like that. You get that by holding the set button down for five seconds. But the parameter that sets whether you have Fahrenheit or Celsius temperatures is in what's called, again, the initial settings. So to go to that one, strangely, you have to first go into the regular settings. Three, four, five. There we go. And cycle through these until, first of all, we get to something that says LCK on the display. There, that's supposed to say LCK, believe it or not. Right now, those are all zeros, which means nothing is locked. But if this second digit is a 1, then you're not allowed to go into the initial settings. So I've already turned it off. That's set to 0, so I can go into the initial settings. So to do that, I hold set and this arrow key for 5 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go. Now we're in SL1 which just means setting type. This is actually a value of 1, which means it's set up for a type J thermocouple. If I go to the next setting, hit set, it goes to the next setting. SL2, the lower digit is the Celsius or Fahrenheit, and right now it says 1, which is Fahrenheit, which is what I want. And there's a bunch of other settings I went through. Uh, some of these, they tell you what they do, and some of them, they just say, don't change them. PB, that's a compensation for your thermocouple. If your thermocouple is reading off by a few degrees, it's set to zero right now. And that is an upper limit on how high I can set the thermostat. So I have that set to 800 Fahrenheit, which should be enough. I might have to turn it up to 850 someday if I want to have higher temperatures. Lower setting is zero. I don't really care about that. And then to get out of this mode to hold both these buttons for five seconds again. There we are. So now we're back in the regular mode and as you see the room temperature is 67 Fahrenheit and I have the thermostat set for 600 but because this switch is off I'm not actually getting any heat to the uh, well to the heaters in the pot. Now because my thermocouple is still just hanging from the wire, here it is, um, I can't just turn this on and walk away because the pot will just stay on forever till the, till, the, till the building burns down. So I have to be around as the metal is melting to stick the new thermocouple in there to get some temperature regulation or something. So I'm going to let this warm up at some point when I can see be here babysitting it and monitoring the temperature as it warms up. Right now I have the clamp taken out that holds the old temperature sensor but it's still embedded in the, in the solid metal. So once this is molten, I can pull this out and bend my new thermocouple to match the shape of the old one and then clamp the new thermocouple here. And then I'll be able to let it run properly, so to speak. Got the pot molten. I've got the thermocouple just stuck in. It's just a straight tube right now. It was already at 745 or so. So now I'm going to switch out the old temperature sensor. And I'm also going to pull out the thermocouple and clean the metal off it and that way I can shape it to match what the old sensor had. This is the end of the old temperature probe. This spot marked with Sharpie here is uh, where it was clamped to the edge of the pot. So I sort of have to duplicate this shape on the new temperature probe. To do that I've got a tubing bender. Now this isn't actually made for the tubing size I have, it's made for a quarter inch tubing a bit. I guess, but I think it'll do the trick. So go in here, sort of eyeball things to get the bend where I want it. This will generate a sharper bend than what was in the old sensor, so I want to make sure I get this right because it's sort of difficult to unbend things. Okay, first bend. Let's see how this goes. Oh, that's not bad. I'm doing the bends a little bit sharper than the original sensor. So, it looks like I want it about an inch deeper than that. I have to slide this up to about here. Let's see how that compares. A little bit deeper. 
about there. Oh, and it fell down. And it moved. And compare it again with the old sensor. So I also want to do a rotation along here, like this. Okay, that looks like a pretty good match now. I'm going to clamp it there. Okay, this has to twist a little more this way. That'll put the bulb about the right spot. So, time to fire up the pot so I can put this back in. I've got the pot molten now, so it's time to put the thermocouple in. I'll slip it in here. around make sure it's not hitting anything and I heard the, the um, contactor click which means the metal is hot the metal is actually almost at 800 and the other thing I'm going to have to do now is bend the rest of this thermocouple to bring the guard around over to this side Along this, this is the post that the controller is on. So I want to have the thermocouple guard come up sort of parallel to this. So the wire goes from the end of the guard up into the box. But for now, I can let the metal harden. The metal's cooled down now, so the pot's solidified. That way the, the part in the metal will not shift around as I do all this other bending. So I'm going to bend this part if I can get the bender on here. I can't use the bender for this because I want the bend to be too close to the controller, the, not the controller, the terminal box for the elements. So bend this around. have it come up here. Obviously I should have made the tube quite a bit longer than I did. Underestimate how long it should be, obviously. So I'm going to have to make a little holder here. Oh, actually. I think I can make that work. Basically, I want the top of this tube to be as alongside this post as possible. So now I can take up all the extra thermocouple wire into the case here. And then I can put the strain relief on and figure out how to control this coil of extra wire. I don't really want to shorten the wire, so I'm going to have to coil this up neatly inside the case and have a strain relief hold it. So one thing I want to make sure is that this is below the top of this terminal box because if I ever use strip casting, the strip material comes out here, just above this box. And I don't want this too close to the box, otherwise I wouldn't be able to get this cover off and service the inside. I've got the extra thermocouple cable sort of coiled up inside the bottom of the case here. I'm going to put a zip tie or two around it to keep it where it is. And then on the post, I've got the cable running along the post for the thermocouple, and I've also got a support wire that holds the wire that goes over to the um, cycle counter. And what I'm doing is I'm strapping these to the post. I've got the bottom strapped already. I've got a tool that does these wire straps, essentially. You start with a loop of wire that looks ridiculously too long for the job, but it actually wraps around the post four times. That in itself uses up almost a foot of wire. You wrap this around the post. Let's see if I can do this pointing the same way as the other one. 
and thread the wires through the loop in its own in its own well through its own loop and try and turn things so the wires aren't crossing each other much and you go around again and through the loop again Now I'm just going to check that the wires aren't sort of randomly crossing each other six or seven times there. So I got those uncrossed. And here's the actual tool. It's got a little notch here that engages in this loop. And then the two loose ends of the wire come over these posts and wrap around these bits and you just twist them until they won't move anymore essentially. So this goes in here and leans on the loop. As long as you have to fit this in after you've got things started. And then the wires go under these posts. I'm making it look all very awkward because I don't use this thing very often. You wrap around this a couple of times and you wrap around here a couple of times. You take these two ends and twist them together. And then I try and spread things here so I can get the tip of the thing into the loop. As I tighten this, I see that I have things backwards. These pins should be under the wires. I think I can do that without untwisting everything. There we go. That's the way it should be. And now I get that tip onto the loop and start tightening again. As I tighten this, it pulls these pins away and that tightens the wires around the post. And once I think it's tight enough, I bring this around. And that loops the two ends of the wires over the end of the loop. And I have just enough room to go all the way by here. On the lower one, I had to stop short because the end of the tool hit the pot crank. But now that's all attached. And so I can loosen off the, the uh, wing nut here. And untwist these wires. Alternatively, I could just cut them top and bottom here. Okay, now the tool's out. I just trim the wires here. And just knock the ends down so that you don't snag on things. And that's pretty firmly attached now. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I can just pivot this so it's in the right position. So this guide wire comes up here and down here and it guides this black wire which goes to the sensor for the cycle count. And there's a little magnet stuck here that it detects. And this has enough slack in it that it can uh, shift around when I swing the pot out because this stays put and this swings with the pot. I've got the strain relief put on the thermocouple cable. That's this metal strap here, and there's a couple of screws from outside the case that just clamp it down to the case. And then coming back to the back of the case, the coil wire is all just coiled up with a couple of red zip ties. Color doesn't matter. And then up to the controller. And then underneath, the thermocouple cable comes out through the grommet down here is strapped to the post and just below the post it goes into its metal sheath here and then from here over it's 
more or less a rigid casing. I've also got this wire supporting the uh, wire that goes to the cycle counter. So it comes this far and the wire just sort of loops around in midair over to the sensor and uh, this is bent so that even when the pot is swung out the end of the support wire is sort of up in the air here over the, the rear pin block and doesn't interfere with anything. So now it's time to put the back on this case. And here it is, all buttoned up. The back's in place, all the screws are in. And I've got the cover on the contactor box here too, which I almost forgot to put on. This controller has what they call a auto-tune function. It sort of learns how quickly the system reacts when, when the heat comes on, uh, how quickly it takes for the temperature to start rising, and then how quickly it rises. And when heat goes off, how quickly the heat stops rising, and then how quickly the pot cools off again when there's no heat. I've actually run it through that tuning mode, but I find it cycles on and off too frequently now. It cycles on and off oh, several times a minute. It's keeping the temperature within one degree Fahrenheit, but uh, that's a lot of cycling. So I'll probably set the, uh, the range of allowable temperatures a little wider if I can to reduce the cycling a bit. But other than that, it seems to work pretty good.